Hello guys, how you doing? So today I'm gonna show you how to level up a mage. Yes, sir, you heard that right. I'm gonna show you how to level up, in this case, the jeweler mage, okay? So as you can see here, I have some stuff that I need to level up. So I need to get to level 100 in something. Now, it's really important that you know how to use the runes and what kind of runes you should use and you should not use all right so i'm gonna show you what items i'm gonna buy for this we will come here to the shop and we will focus on the items from level one to level five approximately because you will want to get every four um from three to five levels each item unless you don't really have something to mage in between those levels because that's gonna give you the most experience so as you can see here in level one i have the incarnate ring the one that we crafted for level seven we've got the adventure amulet so that's six levels in between because i didn't really find something better but i mean you could do it if you have a lot of camas to spend now I saw here that the level 7 ring of the Peewee gives heals, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, leveling up with heal runes is great. I'm going to show you that later. Then we will jump to level 10, then to level 15 or 14 and so on and so forth. So let's just jump straight to the shop. If you come here to my inventory of course you can't come to my inventory anyways so <clears throat> you will basically need a ring or an amulet the same level or inferior to the level you are in in our case this is level one so I will need a level one ring or amulet in this case I'm using the plus one because it's level one the, and what I would do whenever I'm trying to level up a mage is to sort by level my inventory because in this way I can see what objects are coming next for example the first one will be this and then I need to level up all the way up to level 7 to get either this one or this one it's uh, most likely to be this one because it gives heals now let's just put this into practice so as you can see here again sword by level we will use the ring and I think let me see something here it's too high I now here as you can see these runes are 587 camas which is a lot of money and these ones are 400 camas each one which is susceptible but i still don't like that one <clears throat> whoa sorry now what i would do instead is using the runes of heals and or damage so as you can see here this one is 800 camas yeah but you need to look at the density okay so as you can see this density is 20 and the price is 800 now if you take a look at this for example or this let's say this one so the density is 3 and the average price is almost 600 so what does density mean um back in the days we had like the exact amount of experience that we could get from making an object but these days this has changed a little now the amount of experience that a making an object will give you depends on the density of the rune 
So you come from the very, very bottom, which is um, the <clears throat> Let me look. this one, for example, is one in density, right? It provides one strength and it weights one density. The density is basically the weight of the rune in an object. All right. Then we can go to this one, which is 2.5. This is the pod one. All right. Then we can go to this one, for example, which is the perspective one. It gives you three density, many weights, three density. The maximum amount of density is 100. Talking about runes. So placing a AP rune into an object will give you a lot of experience. Now, this can change. For example, if I use this one, <clears throat> it automatically leveled me up to level two, right? And now I'm able to choose dual magus over here and I can show you what I mean. So if I place another one over here, it is giving me nine points of experience, as you can see here, for one density. Now let's try with three density. Now it gave me, so I had 31 less four, that's 27. And 27, three, it's nine. So every single density here with this object at this level is giving me nine experience, right? It means that if I do this one, I'm going to level up to three. But now what happens if I try to get a higher density? Let's say, let's actually look for something cheaper. I think uh, I could go with the uh, prospecting. As you can see, prospecting our density equals 9, and the average price is 451 camas, which is a lot of density for this price. So, if you could try this one a couple of times, this is an XMH, so it's not gonna be working all the times, but as you can see now, well, I don't really remember how much experience I had. Oh my god! <clears throat> Anyways, let's try again. So now we have 76. Let's try with these one more. 76. Oh my god. Alright, 76. So we had 76 less 43. And we got 33. That's given us a decent amount of experience, considering that now the object is level 1 and we are level 4. That's another thing that counts when it comes to Majin. Not just Majin, but leveling up this profession. The level of the object inflicts into the experience you are getting by each rune. Right? So if you're level 4, you will get less experience from a level one than a level four. And I'm gonna show you that whenever I'm able to change between these two amulets. I'm bringing amulets, sorry. So let's just do this. This level is gonna be a little bit expensive talking about runes because the agility and strength runes are expensive. We could, of course, do something different, like uh, using the perspective runes or even the wisdom runes, which is, uh, I would say, better, right? We're getting there, anyways. Okay, and it's basically this. I mean, you just need to do this over and over. As you can see now, the item is perfect, perfectly made, which is um, unusual. It's pretty difficult to get something like that. Now, another rune that I really like when it comes to leveling up a profession of mage are the he runes, because with healings you get 
10 density with just 300 chemists and some change, which is, I mean, it's really good. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Oh no. Yeah, I could. Now, here, for example, I used a density 10 strength room, which provides 10 strength. Now, it says that it only got one point into strength. It doesn't really matter if it gets 1, 2, 3, or 10 strength when it comes to the same room. It is going to always give you the same amount of experience that a density 10 will give you. Alright, so this is not about getting 10 points into strength. It is about getting the density of the room, okay? So I was, as we continue here... <coughs> Sorry that my voice feels a little bit different today. I've been working super hard. And uh, probably a lot of dust in my lungs right now. Because the place where I work, uh, we need to polish stones and stuff like that. So it gets really, really dusty. Maybe for that reason I'm speaking like this. But, well, that's what it is. Okay, one more. There you go. Now we're level 7. And let me show you something real quick here. So we have a density 3 rune. And we have 135 experience points. Alright, let me put this into the calculator. I. So, we're using this one. There you go. 3 strength. Alright, 3 strength. Now, we got... Um... 131 that means that with three strength we got four points into experience that is crazy because that's i mean that's nothing now if we compare it to this one we got 131 right let's use the same rune there you go now we have 131 71 that's 60 per 3 density which is 20 points of experience for each density point right and why did the other one give me just four points of experience and this one is giving me 60 because of the level so levels in the object matter all right so for example if you come here to jeweler and you go from 7 to 10. Okay. So if you have <clears throat> a amulet level 7. Use that one until you are level 10. That's what I would do. Every single 3, 4 or 5 levels I would change the object. Sometimes you need to change it before. So for example. Let's see. These are really, really, really and I say again, really cheap. So, for example, this one, it's level 8. And actually, I really like that one. Let me check it out. Oh, well, anyways, because I have this one over here, which is really good. So, if instead of doing 7 to 10 with the same object, you go 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and so on and so forth, you will level up faster and cheaper just if you have the objects i mean i don't really want you to go and buy in my case 102 objects because i need to level up all the way up to level 100 sorry and four because i need to match these rings right for my team now we will continue until level Okay, 10. I'm actually going to use this one and I'm going to show you why. So as you can see here, I could use the damage rune. You can see that I don't have heals over here. Just, sorry, damage over here. Just heals and dodge, right? If I attempt to do a damage rune, it is going to mess the object. Alright? Now, 
we got here a density of 12 for 1300 kms which is a lot of money but over here we got a density of 10 for only 300 kms so if i attempt to do that look at that i went from level 7 to level 8 and i got a lot of experience and when i say a lot is a lot now I'm, I'm gonna try to do that again just to show you how much experience i get from this all right so if i enter here i got 689 points of experience and if i attempt to do the heal I come here again and look at this i have one <coughs> 848 sorry so as you can see here because i was leveling up a object that is really close to my level i got 159 points into experience just by using a heal rune so what kinds of runes should i buy to level up a profession that's a really interesting question and you should make it yourself okay if you look at this they have something in common right the first one is that I'm using objects that provide heals right in this case for example summons as well in this case wisdom wisdom again here damage here damage as you can see here heals so why heals damage in wisdom because if you take a look at this the most expensive wisdom rune is an average of 900 all right 900 but the density is 30. now a density of 30 is going to provide you with insane amounts of experience and it's really cheap okay it's really cheap another one that could be really good is the prospecting as you can see here it's a density of nine and it is 450 okay that's a good one too another one that i really like to use when i'm leveling up professionals is the damage rune and of course the heal ones because again we have 30 density and we only have like a 1000 cameras which is really really cheap right now you could also use the pods one because they are really good as well but they are a little bit expensive but anyways let's just continue and you will simply do this you will take an object you will mage it until you get like three four or five levels don't go over five unless it's absolutely necessary in this case for example i now go to level 10 now we need to move on to the next one all right and why well basically look at this let me try to do something crazy here so i got the damage and i got two levels two levels with how much let me see 800 chemists okay two levels that is crazy now i want to show you something over here now we got 1376 okay let's put that into the calculator All right and now we're attempting to use the density 30. look at that right that is amazing okay how much experience do we get well, boom. look at that so we're getting 411 points of experience and taking into account that the object is level 10 and we are now level 13 that's a lot of experience right so we will continue doing this until we get to the next level which is in my case 15 and it's basically repeating the same pattern
So now we're level 15, right? Let's just go and use the 15 amulet. Freaking bugs. Freaking bugs. Oh no, why? I mean, okay, that's better. Level, <clears throat> and we now go with the field amulet. Now, as you can see here, for 30 density, we get 2,790. 91 camas. This is an expensive rune. Not even gonna lie. It's super expensive. But I didn't really find a better option. So we need to work with this one. Now, when we don't have good options like this, let me actually show you. I, I think I. No, I don't have a shield. Anyway, let me actually show you. A good way to level up the professionals when you don't have the appropriate object. And it'll be with excess. Okay? So I will simply use this one until I get it. Now sometimes it could be even more expensive than leveling it up with the runes you have. But anyways. Okay. So like in this case, I got... 10 of density for 464 which is good but let me explain you something real quick here now as you can see here it says sync right all right so what is sync well the sync is going to be the density of the rune that an object loses when you try to get a rune into it that sounds complicated right but it's not so complicated now remember that runes have a weight this weight is called density okay so let's just call it density that's a number it's a con constant okay it says minus one summons it says that the object lost this characteristic, okay? So this minus translates into this plus. This plus is going to be the attribute that the object lost. So for example, if it says that it lost the summons, I would get plus 30, which is the density of the, uh, the rune in this case plus 10 chance that means that we need to take 10 points of density out of it why now this one this number over here is gonna tell you the space the empty space that this object has all right this means that I could get 20 points into this object and it will not suffer any kind of damage. Because remember, when you use a rune into an object, there is a probability that the object will suffer a damage, like in this case over here. I got 10 points into chance, yes, but it took out one summon. Now, this sometimes happens, this sometimes doesn't happen. So this is a success, as you can see here, it's in green. And here, it's in red, because it lost an attribute. Now, failures will be red, right? But this is a mixture between a success and a failure, because it gained something, but it lost something. Now, sometimes it could get like a critical hit, like this one, for example, in which I just applied one heal, and it didn't lose something. And the yellow ones will be like the successes. For example, in this case, it got two heals, but it lost one damage. So those are the chances you have. The critical hit will provide the object with the rune you're trying to get with no damage. The failure will just, you know, lost something. Could be vitality, could be chance, could be strength. And the success 
will either take something out and take something in or access something in and take something out okay like in this case it's blue why is it blue because this object doesn't provide you with any chance as you can see here it just provides you summons initiative and it takes a little bit of luck out of you but it doesn't provide chance okay so now we have 20 empty space in this object what are we gonna do with this well I could actually do this and as you can see here it didn't lose anything else it just lost 10 points into the sink as you can see so now I got 10 okay and if I do this once more I got 10 points into chance one more once more All right now the sink is actually zero if I attempt to do something with this object like this okay it said failure it is actually a bug if I attempt again okay this is a critical hit okay another critical hit alright now here we have the sink is empty which means that every single time that I put a rune into it three things can happen first one it could be a failure the second one it could be a critical hit and it'll get the amount of characteristic that I'm trying to get into the object with no suffering with no damage and the third one would be a normal success which is going to give me look at this <clears throat> so 30 initiative it is 3 density right but 3 chance is also 3 density so the probability that if I take 3 initiative will take out 3 chains in this object is pretty pretty high because these are the only two characteristics I'm trying to mage from it. Now, if I attempt to do a summon rune, that's a failure. But if I try again, another failure. But if I try once more, that's not a failure. That's actually a critical hit. Because as you can see, I still have the chains in the object, the initiative, and the summons right now. Now, sometimes it says failure, but it's not a failure. That is what we call a bug okay a miscalculation in the programming or something like that nice all right so the next one is going to be at level 20 I think yes sir mm -hmm. let's see what we can do over here um, another thing that I forgot it to mention is that chains runes are really 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 cheap okay as you can see now I'm getting 30 chains into this amulet okay there you can see now another thing that I would like to explain to you is that an object has a minimum amount of the characteristic and a maximum amount of the characteristic now, if the effect of the object is more than the maximum, we call this an overmaged characteristic. Okay, now this is different from the exomaged because exo will be blue. Okay, exomage it's something that a object doesn't provide. But overmage is something that the object provides, but you are getting it actually better. Example, if I come here and I take a look at this, this is an overmage into vitality because it, it provides you from 31 to 40 points into vitality and mine gives you 161, right? This one is an exomage, as you can see it's in blue color because this object doesn't give you air damage. As well as this one, this object doesn't give you fire damage. So I hope that is clear. So we continue because we need to level up all the way to level uh, blah, 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 blah. 96 I think. What average price by level? Yeah, 96, which is this one. Nice. Now, I know that a lot of people hate Majin. 
and it's not it's not that they don't like it it's that they hate it but I like it so as you can see now we got level 20 20 20 oh, okay and now we are trying to get all the way up to level 21 because this one will be expensive these runes are expensive so I don't really like them I could try with the pots one and level up to 21 there we go now I uh, actually let me do this because if I mage this well I could sell it at a good price let's do with intelligence okay 30 45 that's a good one but let's go with 60 oh okay that's good uh that's good look 63 vitality 15 intelligence this one will be expensive can assure you that okay so we take this one until 26 all right now wisdom wisdom as i mentioned before is a really good run to level up the professions of maiden I'm out of rune, so let's go and buy some. Mm. These ones are a little bit cheaper. Let's buy 700. And you can come over here and combine resources. And that way, sometimes you can actually save some camas. Let's do 200 and let's continue maging. Oh my god. Over here. All right. So we go with wisdom and we need to level up, remember, all the way up to level 26 to get this ring. Now here, we could actually use the heal ones to take some of the wisdom out of the object and start again okay so one oh my god one oh two and three hey come on man come on buddy mm -hmm. now we can use some agility as well I mean why not 26 And we could actually attempt to overmatch this one with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my. It's being a little bit picky. There you go. Look at that. Now it gives 5, 50 vitality, 20 intelligence, and 14 strength. Now for intelligence based characters, this is going to be really good. And I'm pretty sure it's going to sell really good. Cool. Vitality. Oh. Well, there we go. Uh, one more. Oh my god. I love this one. Look at that. So 60 vitality and 20 strength, which is... <laughs> I love it with more intelligence. Okay, so that's 30, 33, 32, 31. Oh, okay, it didn't work. Okay, it's working. Oh, it's not working. Anyways, oh, there you go. There you go. Look at that 30 intelligence and 20 strength. That's good for intelligence and strength based characters. And now we go with another one, which is going to be better. Okay. Oh, no. Ah. Oh. oh. Jesus. Crap. Oh, my. <laughs> 38. That's good. I'm selling that one just that way. Okay. Now we go with this one. I love this one because it's super good. Because we have 20 density over here, which is uh, space for 100 vitality. So we are going to try to get, oh, some of that out. And, okay, I failed. 
Hmm. Oh my lord. Look at that. Whoa. 100 vitality and 3 damage. That's good. I can do better. I know I can do better. Okay. Let's see how better. There we go. And if we attempt to do it... Oh, oh my god, no! <laughs> this is what I like about Majin. Sometimes it could be good, sometimes it could be terrible. But, well, that's good. Hmm. Sometimes it could be something like this. 170 and 2 damage. That's, I mean, this is a seller. It would be a keeper. Anyways, let's just try to do this once more. Okay. That's not the best one, but I don't want to spend too much cameras on it. Alright, so now you understood the basis on Majin and leveling up and out depth. I think that's very clear. If it's not, leave it in the comments and I will explain that with other professions. Now I'm going to show you the proof that this is actually profitable. Look at these sales. So as you can see here, I sold the Royal Gobbles ring for 125,000 camas. This is an object that I made. This is the belt that Grelka used. Some cloaks over here. I mean, you name it. It's a lot of camas, man. <laughs> it's a lot of camas. Alrighty, so that's the way I level up my mage professions. Just by maging some objects that are not worth it to buy or sell and the way that I like the most leveling my professions up is by imagining the objects that I can actually sell as you can see here I was looking for the best price to sell my objects and I got really really high prices now I would recommend you leveling up these professions with these kind of objects because yeah I know maybe the runes will be more expensive than leveling them up with heals damage or wisdom but they will give you a profit I'm gonna make uh, around six hundred and something thousand out of the global objects and I didn't spend more than 100,000 camas on runes. So that's a profit of around 500,000, which is crazy. As you can see here, I was just leveling the profession up, mainly using objects that I would not sell because those are not really common, but that's what it is. Then we have this amulet, for example, that I use for my pot set. As you can see, it gives me 700 pots and other kinds of rings and amulets. So, in conclusion, try to level up with items that either are really good to sell or provide you with wisdom, damage, or heals. Because those are going to be really, really easy and cheap to mage so that was the video if you have any kind of question just drop it in the comments and i will be happy to answer yo i love you <laughs> goodbye